Data shows that Virginia is home to over 115,000 Africans in the diaspora community. Some of them gathered here to meet with United States Democratic Senators Mark Warner and Tim Kaine. As someone who's worked in the policy world for about 12 years, I know the importance of having African voices and policymakers and business folks coming together. It's, it's a powerful tool, uh, and I think the more that our community uh, understands the, the, the impact uh, that policy can have in terms of uh, business development and also uh, developing our continent, I think the better. The discussion centered around issues pertinent to the African diaspora, including trade, community engagement, and U.S. Africa policy. Findings by the New American Economy Research show that the African diaspora is one of the fastest growing population of immigrants in the United States, with a 50% increase from 2010 to 2018. For Senator Tim Kaine, it is an opportunity. One out of every eight Virginians was born in another country. It was one out of a hundred when I was born. So you can see how dramatically we're changing as a commonwealth, but more than 10% of those um, new Americans are from Africa. So we're seeing this all over the Commonwealth. We need to recognize it as a value. There's sort of a competition to some degree in terms of influence in Africa between the United States, Russia, and China. Russia and China have assets, but what they don't have is an African diaspora community. So why, why don't we view our African American population, and especially our African diaspora community, as a connection point um, with Africa? Some of the attendees said the meeting afforded them an opportunity to convey the diaspora's concerns and suggestions to the current U.S. administration. In terms of policy and in terms of um, economic development, I think them being able to see uh, the plethora of African talent here, the different businesses, what we do, technology, climate change, innovation, they're able to take that back and see how they can utilize that to work with African countries and increase economic development. Observers say African immigrants make significant contributions to the U.S. economy as entrepreneurs. U.S. Deputy Secretary of the Treasury Wally Adeyemo, the highest ranking diaspora member in the Biden administration, said various measures are in place to improve the business landscape for small businesses in America and abroad. At Treasury, we have a relatively small budget, but we're making sure that of that money, we're trying to devote as much as possible of it to minority-run businesses. But I know that many of you, in addition to being interested in doing business here, want to be able to do business back home. You want to open up business opportunities for the people who live in the countries that, we, that you all love deeply, that you've come from. And a big part of that is not only um, the DFC and um, MCC, but it's also us being in a position where, as the United States of America, we think more broadly than just about what we can do here, be it a GOA or other relationships, but that we work together with our allies and partners to make sure that we're creating the economic ecosystems in our countries where businesses like yours can compete. Democratic Senator Mark Warner has worked extensively on U.S.-Africa relations in countries such as Kenya and Ethiopia. We need to do more trade deals with Africa. And recently there has been a U.S.-Kenya trade deal announced. I think we need more. I would love to see us continue to support democratic reform, for example, in Ethiopia, a very important country. I think we need to guarantee human rights in Sudan. So we need more engagement there. Secondly, uh, the American military's headquarters for Africa is in Germany. That's crazy. Senator Kane and I both agreed that we would commit to try to move that headquarters to Africa. And then finally, the administration is going to have a, a summit with African leaders coming later this year. I want to make sure that members of the diaspora are involved in planning that summit. Uh, so they're not just watching it on TV, but participants. So those are three tangible action items I want to take away from today's session. U.S. President Joe Biden is scheduled to host leaders from across the African continent during the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit in Washington, D.C. from December 13 to 15. Lenore Moudou, VOA News, Alexandria, Virginia.